Hi, my name is Dom Hebro and I'm here to help you get the most knowledge out of the information, the data you get from Metla Toledo instruments. A lot of people ask me how they can red flag a process at laboratory scale before they go to a plant scale. And here I picked up an example I recently came across where we're going to look at three process safety parameters that are critical when doing early on safety assessment for larger scale implementation. The first one is determine when you have a high instantaneous heat release. If it's not properly uh, controlled or checked uh, on a large scale you may get the chemical process to run up out of control. Second we're gonna define and examine an example where delayed initiation can be an issue from a safety standpoint, but also because it may lead to a product of poor quality. Finally, we're going to look at heat accumulation, first define it, and then see how the resulting temperature increase may actually, you know, you may run the risk of, of uh, having an uncontrolled exotherm on a larger scale. All right, here's the chemistry. It's a two-step chemistry where first you have a double deprotonation using a strong base, he hexit lithium. And the second step goes from the resulting anion into benzyl alcohol uh, using oxygen as the oxidant. For the purpose of the study, we use an easy max uh, for accurate and automated controlled reaction variables. We use the calorimetry kit, which is a, an add-on to the to the EasyMax, and also the software uh, interface necessary to run calorimetry. The software is eye control. All right, now I'm going to switch to the eye control software page to show you how to interpret the results. All right. So in purple, you have the heat that you can read on the on the left axis. In green, you have the dosing profile for the strong base hexi-lithium that you can read on the right side of the screen. And the volume uh, goes from zero to about 45 milliliter of base to the addition mixture. So on the left side, you can look at the first deprotonation step, one equivalent of hexi-lithium. Uh, when I look at this, I conclude that the reaction is dosing control because the reaction heat goes up to a maximum level, stable level, right after uh, the start of dosing. It remains at a constant rate, so meaning that the reaction has a constant rate. And when the syringe stops adding because it has to be refilled, the, the heat profile goes back down to zero, right? The syringe refills and then starts adding the second equivalent of base and you can see a second square wave where the amount of energy is actually about half what it was during the first deprotonation. You can see that by looking at the instantaneous heat profile. It's about 2.53 watt of energy versus 5.5 and the overall heat was about 9 kilojoule whereas it's about 4 kilojoule in the second uh, deprotonation uh, step. All right, so uh, even though the reaction is pretty exothermic, it can be extremely well controlled through the dosing rate. Now, I'd like to show you the second step. That's a lot trickier from a large scale implementation. And I'm talking about the oxygen oxidation of uh, the resulting anion into benzyl alcohol. At this point, Oxygen was introduced to the vessel, and you can see the heat going up from zero to about, I would say, three, four watt for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, if you were in the lab at that time, you may conclude that the reaction is pretty much uneventful, and the reaction is well behaved. And if you had stepped out of the lab, you may miss that huge temperature and sudden increase of energy that goes up to about 60 watt at 100 milliliter scale that correspond to about 650 watt or 600 watt at a liter scale. So really the kind of energy that's, that cannot be implemented on any scale beyond the, the, a couple of liters, maybe a laboratory scale. So something you really have to pick up before you consider any uh, safe scale up, all right? 
it's a sudden uh, increase of energy that goes back down to zero after just a few minutes, so very sudden, okay? So I hope you found that example useful. And to conclude, I'd like to give you a couple of references, one from 2010, when the first one where you're gonna find some uh, use of EasyMax for early on uh, heat screening. Uh, second example is with the RC1 for uh, pro safety evaluation, how it is uh, typically used I'm giving you a web link to the page where you're going to find more information about calorimetry in general, but also information about EasyMax, OptiMax, and the RC1. And finally, the link to, uh, to the AutoCAN blog. Thank you.